Hey everyone, um, I wanted to do a YouTube video based on another YouTube video I saw by Coughlin666 called Meet the Black Sarah Palin. And I agree completely with him on this issue. I think she is ridiculous. She's hypocritical. She is contradictory. And if you haven't watched her video, I'm going to link it in the sidebar if you can stand it. I could only get part way through it. Um, I understood the rest of what happened by watching Coughlin 666's video because I just couldn't face watching the rest of that. So I wanted to do this video based on hypocrisy and judgment and why a lot of Christians and a lot of mainstream Christians as well, not just the fundy types, but a lot of mainstream Christians, yes I'm talking to you this time, they say that they are the least judgmental of everybody. And they say, oh the Bible says that you shouldn't judge and only the, only the Lord can judge, only God can judge. And yet, oftentimes, they are the most judgmental people I have ever come across. And they continue to judge people. For example, imagine if you had a friend, and that friend had a friend that you haven't met yet. And they said to you, hey, you've got to meet my, my new friend. And you say, oh, cool, what are they like? And they tell you that they are, I don't know, an animal rights activist or something. You instantly form in your mind an opinion of what that person might be like, based on your prior knowledge or prior conceptions of what an animal rights activist might be like. So you might envisage them as some kind of wool shirt wearing, hippie, pot smoking, dramatically liberating guinea pigs from, from farms. You might have that as an image in your head and then you meet them and they turn out to be quite a mild mannered member of Greenpeace or something, or a supporter of the WWF or something. And you realise that your preconceptions were completely wrong. But we all do it. We all form these preconceptions. We all prejudge people. We all do it. And you actually have to make a conscious effort to not base your opinion on all your preconceived ideas about what that person might be like. And it's the same reason why most people will wear a suit to a job interview. If you turn up at a smart executive company in a pair of jeans, a scrappy t-shirt, and you're covered in tattoos and you've got 71 body piercings, then they're probably not going to hire you. You might be, on paper, the best person for the job. But because they judge you on appearance, and also because they know that their clients will judge you on your appearance. They choose not to hire you and they maybe hire somebody with slightly worse qualifications but somebody who looks much better and they think well we can train them with the rest of it. So to me that kind of judgment is acceptable or at least understandable as long as you don't then continue to hold that judgment once you've met that person. The problem for me arises is when you meet somebody and they are a perfectly nice person but they are an animal rights activist or whatever, whatever that category is that you happen to have a problem with. And you continue to then hold that against them and make them aware of that every time you see them. And the same would go for this black Sarah Palin that she's been dubbed, her and her cousin. She says in her video that she has a gay cousin and she loves her to death. She obviously you know, loves her so much she, she said that she won't even go to her wedding if she ever gets married. That's, that's love right there. You won't even hang up your own personal uh, objections to support her on the biggest day of her life. Yeah, that's real love, that is. Imagine that you meet this person that I mentioned earlier, the friend of a friend who's an animal rights activist, and you then continue to label them, oh, you're an animal rights activist, oh, I don't agree with what you're doing, or whatever. Every time you see them, you make it constantly known that that's a point of view that you really disagree with and you judge them for it. That is stupid, absolutely stupid. If they are a perfectly nice person otherwise, why even make it an issue? If you don't agree with gay marriage, have a straight one. If, if you don't agree with abortion, don't have one. Don't deny everybody else a choice that is not black and white. And in, obviously in the case of homosexuality, it's not even a choice. It's the way they're made. It's the way they're born. All the research points to that fact. If you raise kids in a, in a straight environment, they still turn out gay, if that's the way they're born. If you raise kids in a gay environment, They'll turn out straight if that's the way they're born, or gay if that's the way they're born. It has, upbringing has very, very little, if no, bearing at all on your sexual orientation. That's where the research points. I'll see if I can find some of that research. I've read some in the past. I'll see if I can fish some of that out and post the links in the sidebar for you. It might take a while. I'm just, I'm so totally sick, so totally sick and tired of people saying, oh, I don't judge, I don't judge. But I'm going to judge this bunch of people right now in the, in the exact same breath. Yes, we all judge people. We all do it on, on preconceptions, on rumours, on what we've heard. We all judge people. 
that's natural, that's human nature. But what we don't need to do, what we really don't need to do, is then continue to hold an opinion on that particular individual based solely on this one little aspect of their life. If something that somebody's doing is affecting you directly, as in it's hurting you or it's hurting somebody else, then, then fine, you can object to it. But how is being gay actually affecting you? How is somebody else being a, a, a homosexual or a heterosexual or a bisexual or a transsexual or whatever? How does that actually even affect you? I mean, do you concern yourself with the sex life of your straight friends? No, I don't think you do. It doesn't matter. It makes absolutely no difference to your life. So why is the fact that two people in the privacy of their own home or even openly out on the street expressing love for one another, expressing either gay love or straight love or whatever, how does that impact your life in any way? How does it affect your life in any way? If you don't concern yourself with what your straight friends are doing, then why would you concern yourself with what your gay friends are doing? But being gay isn't even a choice. If you're making somebody feel bad because of the way they were born, that's being really awful. That's, that's no different to somebody judging you on the colour of your skin. If I, if I turned to you and said, I have plenty of black friends. Oh, plenty of black friends. I've got lots of black friends. I've even got some half-black friends. I've got some mixed-race friends. I've got some half-breed friends. I'm perfectly fine with them. They're all lovely people. But if any of them ever decided to get married, that's just wrong. If I was to turn and say that to you, would you think I was being a dick? Yeah, you would. And guess what? That's because I would be being a dick. That's no way to treat a friend that you love. That's no way to treat a family member that you love. I'm not going to agree with them getting married because of something that they can't help. Because of their skin colour or because of their sexual orientation or because of the, the, the social class they were born in or anything. Anything that you'd like to pick. The colour of their hair, the colour of their eyes. Put it in those terms. Do you not understand where your hypocrisy is coming from? Especially after the civil rights movement. Especially after your ancestors fought so hard to get equal rights for something that you couldn't help, the colour of your skin. You're turning around and saying to other people, we're going to deny you rights because of something that you can't help. But we're not judging. Oh no. Oh no, we're not judging. Because that would be wrong. Thanks for your time, YouTubers. Peace out.